Good day, everyone. It's 12 noon here in Phoenix, and we'd like to welcome you from whatever time zone you may be at to a wonderful day as we celebrate a major milestone in the life of 11 of our Hubert H. Humphrey Fellows, and also a milestone here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications in downtown Phoenix, although we're literally coming from all over the world. We promise a lively hour together as we celebrate through some video tributes and some special guest speakers what has been an amazing Humphrey year for all of our fellows. This is the 10th year of our fellowship program and the 40th year of the Hubert H. Humphrey program. We'll hear more about that in just a few minutes. We appreciate all of the special guests who have joined us, including Dean Christopher Callahan, Dr. Peter Moran and Amy Nemeth from the Institute of International Education and Loretta Campbell from the US State Department. Of course, nobody is more special here today than you who have taken the time to watch and of course, to celebrate with our 11 fellows. So as we do every week when we meet together in the Cronkite Global Suite, we'd like them just to briefly check in with their name and where they are. Three of them are back in their home countries already. A fourth is on her way. Let's begin by having the brief check-in and uh, we first start with Mona from Egypt. Hello everyone, I'm Mona Ali. I'm a communications professional from Egypt, and I'm speaking to you from Phoenix. Hello, everyone. I'm Radovan Bogoyevich from Montenegro, speaking to you currently from the quarantine in Montenegro. Uh, hi, I'm Chen Tao Tsui. I'm from China, and I'm speaking to you uh, from downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Hello, I'm Pierre Gipino from Haiti. I'm a communication professional. I'm talking to you from um, Phoenix, Arizona. Hi everyone, I'm Camila Lamia, a journalist from Philippines, and I'm speaking to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Hello everyone, I'm Monica Rivero, I am from Cuba, and right now I'm in Havana, Cuba. Hello everyone, I'm Deus from Uganda, right now I'm speaking to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Hi everyone, I'm Ha Chun, journalist from Vietnam. I'm speaking to you from San Francisco. Hi everyone, this is Noreen Shams from Pakistan. I'm speaking to you from downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Hi everyone, this is Aung Naim So, a multimedia journalist from Myanmar. I'm speaking to you from downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Hi everyone, I'm Nera Valentich, I'm executive producer from Croatia, and I'm speaking to you from the island of Greece, Croatia. Hi, and I'm Elizabeth Blackburn, I'm the Cronkite Global Initiatives Program Coordinator, and I'm speaking to you from downtown Phoenix. Uh, and, I, and I am, uh, oh, <laughs> and I'm Jose Ignacio Castaneda, and I'm the student worker with the Cronkite Global Initiatives team from downtown Phoenix. And I'm Mary Ann Barrett. I had the pleasure of uh, teaching the seminar this past fall, and I'm speaking to you from Scottsdale, Arizona. Hi, I'm John Meisner, uh, the spring semester professor for the Humphrey Seminar. And although I was a professor, I found myself being a student much of the, of the time as I learned about the fellows' cultures and aspirations. Congratulations, graduates. Wonderful, thank you all. We have a couple of quick slides we want to show as we explain a little bit about how the Humphrey program works and is here at the, at the Cronkite School. We are seeing the names on the screen now of all of our fellows and we'll go back to that later. The next slide shows the mission statement of Cronkite Global Initiatives, which is to see the world, know the world and report the world. Last fall, as you can see in this next picture, the fellows gathered in the First Amendment Forum where they celebrated, including a beautiful birthday cake, the 10th anniversary of the program at Cronkite, as well as the 40th anniversary of the program um, across the United States. They spent a wonderful week in Washington, DC, as you see in this next photo, and the highlight of which was being at the US State Department for a wonderful event uh, with several key dignitaries, ambassadors, members of the State Department celebrating this huge milestone. The program, of course, is named after Hubert H. Humphrey, and one of the quotes we love here at the Cronkite School, you see in this next slide, is focused at Monument Valley, which is a place the fellows will dream about and someday be able to return and go see. A leader is one who summons the best from others as he calls upon the best within himself to join in the common cause and the common purpose. And clearly, their leadership was put to the test as they had to suddenly reinvent their, how their Humphrey year would unfold. 
Walter Cronkite, who is the namesake of the school, and we always think about flying and driving his ships. I guess he didn't fly them unless he, maybe he did because he was trying to go into space, but he certainly was loved to be out on the sea. And so it's wonderful to think about that. And as he circled at least part of the globe along the Atlantic seaboard, we at the Cronkite School have drawn concentric circles to put the Humphrey program together. So each fellow is embedded in a program of classes, community involvement, global friends, faculty mentors, and of course, professional affiliations. None of this would have been possible without the vision, the inspiration, and really the uh, energy of Dean Christopher Callahan, who is the founding dean of the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications. And we'd like Chris to share a few remarks at this moment. Chris? Well, thanks. Thanks so much, Dr. Bill. And, and first and foremost, congratulations to all of our Humphrey Fellows. I'm going to come back to you just in a moment. Uh, but first, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Larita and all of her colleagues at the State Department for this great partnership that we've had for 10 years now. Uh, and of course, our friends at IAE, uh, Amy and, and, and Peter, uh, just again, just been a fantastic partnership. Um, I can tell you that the Humphrey program has been such a central part of the Cronkite School for the last decade. Um, I've had the pleasure of um, participating in Humphrey programs uh, long before uh, I came to Arizona State University, um, where we had a, uh, a Humphrey program in journalism at the University of Maryland, Philip Merrill College of Journalism in College Park, Maryland, where I, uh, uh, where I served for many years. So I really understood, even before coming to Cronkite, the power of, of the Humphrey program. And, um, and we were just so pleased uh, to be able to, to sponsor uh, the journalism program uh, of the Humphreys here at, at Cronkite. Uh, the fellows bring so much to our school and to our students. And, and Dr. Bill and I talk about this a lot. It's really, it brings in many ways the world to our campus and to our students. And keep in mind, at Arizona State University, we serve a wide a variety of, 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 of socioeconomic and demographic populations. Uh, many of our students are first generation students who can't afford uh, to do study abroad trips. So it's, it's just such a powerful learning experience from our perspective. I hope it is half as that much um, uh, from, for our Humphrey Fellows. Um, and I will tell you that this, this year's group is such a remarkable group um, uh, long before COVID-19. Um, uh, the, the, certainly the, just the professional, the professionalism and the depth of experiences of, of all the fellows was, um, was extraordinary, but then also the way that the team came together, um, which is sometimes difficult, right? I mean, you're, you know, it's a, it's a blend of, of cultures in this cauldron for a very brief period of time. And I've just been so impressed to watch our Humphreys this year. Um, really coalesce as, as a group uh, to be looking out for each other. Um, and, and, and I can tell you in the, in the 10 years uh, that we've had the Humphrey program here at the Cronkite School and in the years before that at the University of Maryland, um, uh, this I really do believe is the most accomplished uh, and the best group of Humphrey fellows uh, I've ever seen. And I will say that was before COVID-19. And, and what you all have shown over the last eight weeks, over the last eight very difficult weeks, uh, and they've been difficult for everybody. Um, um, and for those of us where this is home, it's been difficult. For those of you where this is just your temporary home, we understand uh, the added degree of challenges that that has posed. And you all have handled that, I think, with great adaptability, with grace, and, and with extraordinary perseverance. So I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I'm, I just so admire uh, our Humphrey Fellows this year. And, um, and we're sad. We're sad that the program had to be altered in this way, but I, I know that you got every ounce out of it that, that you could have. And it was just so, it was just so marvelous to see. And, and it really was an honor to have you here at the Cronkite School uh, at Arizona State University in Phoenix. And I hope uh, you will continue to think of this as your home in the months and the years to come long after you're gone, because we really feel part of you and we hope you will continue to feel part of us. Um, I'd like to just take a second and thank uh, our great staff, Jan and Elizabeth, uh, our terrific faculty members, 
uh, Marianne Barrett and, and John Meisner, and, um, and last but not least, our guiding light uh, for the Humphrey program, Dr. Bill Silcock. Uh, when we first created this program, uh, when we first thought about when Dr. Bill got, and I got together and said, boy, wouldn't it be fantastic if we had the Humphrey program here? Bill was really the architect, the guiding light for this. His passion for all things international and international media and, and, and cross-cultural communications was such a, uh, was so powerful for us. And from that day forward, he has driven not just uh, the Humphrey program as our program curator, but also um, all uh, Cronkite International programs as part of Cronkite Global as our, as our director of all of those programs. So Dr. Bill, thank you for all that you've done, all you, you continue to do for, um, uh, for our students, for Humphrey Fellows, uh, and for this great, this great collection of Humphrey Fellow alumni that you now have all around the world. So thank you all very much. And again, to our Humphrey Fellows, congratulations. We so wish we could be doing this in person, trust me. Um, uh, but please know that we are, we are with you together in spirit. Thanks, Dean Callahan. Thank you for those kind remarks. And thanks for your initial vision that allowed us even to be here today, even doing this through the miracle of Zoom. Uh, Dr. Peter Moran is the director at the Hubert H. Hum of the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellowship Program at the Institute of International Education. And Peter, we appreciate you taking time to share a few thoughts with these 11 fellows who, and others who may be in the future doing a Humphrey program since it's now going to be recorded and shared. It could be a, even a marketing tape for future Humphrey fellows. Peter? <laughs> Thank you, Bill. It's, it's really, uh, really my great pleasure to be here. Um, I am here today as someone who is new to the Humphrey program in some ways, newer than, than almost all of you, maybe all of you. Um, I started uh, as director of the Hubert H. Humphrey program at AIE just, um, just about five months ago. So um, I came in halfway through your time here. Um, and there's a few observations that I've made. I guess the first thing that I want to say is um, I heard your reputation, the reputation of the 11 Humphrey fellows at the Cronkite School. It preceded uh, it preceded you. So by the time I got here, I heard that we had this great group at ASU, and that's backed up by what Dean Callahan was just talking about. Um, you all came here as people who are trained as keen listeners and keen observers. Um, you come to uh, our country, the United States, and particularly to Phoenix and to ASU, at first as very much as strangers in this quite strange land, which has gotten unfortunately much stranger as you have stayed here. I really have an appreciation for this and a great admiration for this as someone who was trained and worked as an anthropologist for a long time abroad. I think that having new insights and new observations, um, yes, about things external, uh, about things like food and the space uh, that we share, interactions between people. Um, all of these things are important, but we also uh, have new insights and observations about ourselves. We learn how we are all, uh, not just ourselves, but the other Humphrey Fellows that we come into contact with and who we spend so much time with, especially initially as a bonded cohort. We are all products of our own cultures, but we're also all individuals. And as individuals, we are always works in progress. So I just want to take a very short moment here to praise all of you, you 11, for your courage in coming on this program initially. There are many people who would not do that, who would not leave their, the comfort of their home their community, their job, to come to the States for something kind of totally, uh, of course, with a good reputation, but still an adventure and you're not quite sure how things are going to go. And it's a sacrifice. I also want to praise your commitment, your commitment to your own goals and also to the goals and the dreams and the hopes of your families and to your wider communities. 
I want to recognize your resilience, not just during this COVID situation, but really from the beginning, when you started here as folks who are undertaking an adventure really on your own. And certainly even more so now in the face of these changes and this worldwide disruption and often great suffering that's been brought in the wake of this pandemic. And I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for your example, a really powerful example to me as someone who just started in the Humphrey program. You all are, as we say in American idiomatic English, you are walking the walk. You're not just talking the talk. That is the walk of leadership and the walk of public service. And I wanna thank you for that and for the example that you give all of us. It's really been my honor to be here with all of you as my first Humphrey year. And I wanna give you my very heartiest congratulations as graduates of the Cronkite School Humphrey program. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And of course, Amy Nemeth, who is a, a no stranger to the Cronkite School nor the Humphrey program. Amy, would you say a couple of words as our program director specifically among your many assignments working with those here at Arizona State? Sure. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. I just want to say congratulations to the fellows. It's such a pleasure to be here today um, and to mark this uh, wonderful occasion of your completion of the fellowship year. It was Great working with all of you throughout the year, starting from my visit um, out in Phoenix in September, all the way through now. Um, and I wish you nothing but the best as you finish your year and, and make your journeys home. I look forward to keeping in touch with all of you and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, who was working even as recently and an hour ago to help make sure Ha gets on her plane back to Vietnam, which we think is going to happen in the next uh, 48 hours. So thank you for, for that diligence. The Humphrey program at the Cronkite School would not happen without a great team that we have to work with up at Cronkite Global. I'd like to introduce Jan Holland Malcolm, who is the director of the program for us, uh, who works alongside Elizabeth and Jose and, and group of faculty and other folks to make sure the program works. Jan? Thank you, Dr. Bill. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us for this very special and monumental celebration of our Humphrey cohort as we close out the year. Um, as Dr. Bill said, I um, am everything Humphrey and I couldn't be more pleased to be working with this current cohort. I'm, also, I'm always pleased to be working with all of our alumni, but this cohort, um, as um, Peter mentioned earlier, its reputation preceded itself. I was so impressed before they even arrived and they, they lived up to whatever wild expectations I might have drummed up in my head. And it's been truly a pleasure and an honor to have worked with them since August, since they arrived here in Arizona. Um, one of the things that we would do in a normal ceremony, if we were all together, is the fellows would be receiving a certificate. And the certificate would be from the um, Cronkite School. And it looks like this. It's this lovely um, Arizona State University folder. And on the inside, has their name and it talks about their accomplishments completing the program at Arizona State University. We would have much fanfare and they would cross the stage and we would shake their hands and we would hug them. But in this uh, COVID um, year, I will be driving around the valley to those that are still here in town and delivering them in parking lots and waving at them from a safe six foot distance and wishing desperately I could give them um, a, a non-socially distant hug, but I can't. So we'll make do for right now. Additionally, once the fellows return home, they receive a certificate of completion of their Humphrey year from the US Department of State. It, this certificate is very special and coveted by the fellows. It is um, signed by the President of the United States as well as the Secretary of State. And speaking of our fantastic fellows, I would like to introduce the first five of them right now. 
as tradition holds, we uh, allow the fellows to make um, a statement at the end of their year um, because distance and technology um, doesn't permit the best um, connection sometimes. Um, they have pre-recorded their statements and we show you the first group now. It's easy for me to say that my Humphrey year has been one of the best in my entire life. And even though it came to a halt too soon, I would not trade it for the world. I have changed so much over the past eight months or so, both as a person and as a professional. My professional and academic experiences at ASU have enabled me to refine my professional focus and I have become much more steadier on my feet and more excited to take on a new chapter in my professional life. I believe I'm now better equipped to start two media projects related to social purpose and environmental issues back in Egypt, my home country, and I believe I have the passion, the determination, and the team and the connections both here and back at home that can all help me along the way. To my professors and, my, and the Cronkite Global team, there are no words to describe how grateful I am to each and every one of you for believing in me and helping me acquire all the skills and the knowledge that I needed to become a better leader in the future. I am sure I will not disappoint you. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Radovan. I'm currently in the quarantine in Montenegro. I really hope that I will give my graduation speech in the First Amendment Forum, but what we can do now? Our plans were cut short by the epidemics, but I believe that all of us use this time wisely and that we improve our careers and that we'll also improve our countries because that was the point of this program. I grew uh, professionally a lot, uh, or technically by acquiring new skills, I learned how to code, but also as a leader, Learn how to critique think all the academic classes and uh, uh, various events. I just felt uh, I rebuilt my value and uh, I learned how to critique thinking. So now I understand what is uh, humanitarianism and what is sustainable uh, development and uh, what is uh, uh, cross culture exchange. Um, we seem to be having some technical difficulty at the moment. I think our IT team is uh, getting the video reset. Um, so it's live transmission here. So um, as soon as Chris um, can start, he'll start again. We're kind of seeing the back, you know, the back alley here. <laughs> That's great. Development and uh, what is the uh, cross culture exchange and international cooperation. And these things is, is fascinating and I, I, I love it. So I think this also will become my uh, fundamental to make my future decision and judgments. 
Uh, second is that I learned a lot of journalism skills, like uh, uh, documentary and data journalism. I think these skills and ideas will help me a lot when I come back to China and continue my uh, career in media industrial. And third is that after this year, I gained a lot of friendships. Our Humphrey, our Humphrey, our Humphrey cohort, uh, the teacher. Well, perhaps what we need to do, Jan, is just use the miracle of modern technology and, and let... Uh, I'm going to share it through QuickTime. Give me a minute. Okay, Chris, uh, okay, th those of you who didn't hear, and don't mean to jump in there, Jan, but Chris Campbell's doing some more magic behind the scenes to be able to share this video. We'll push these out on social media, of course, and you'll be able to watch all of these later and uh, to be at high speed, uh, depending on where you are and where you're watching. <clears throat> to critic thinking, so now I understand what is uh, humanitarianism in and what is sustainable uh, development and uh, what is the uh, uh, Cross cultural exchange and international cooperation, and these things is is fascinating, and I, I I love it. So I think this also will become my uh, fundamental to make my future decision and judgments. Uh, second is that I learn a lot of journalism skills, like uh, uh, documentary and data journalism. I think these skills and ideas will help me a lot when I come back to China and continue my uh, career in media industrial. And third is that after this year, I gain a lot of friendships. Our Humphrey, our Humphrey, our Humphrey cohort, uh, the teachers in Kwangkai School, and uh, my global friends, uh, my other friends in the United States, these guys are so cute and lovely and will become my lifelong friends. So I'm very thanks for this opportunity for uh, the Humphrey cohort. We live in together, learning from each other, and uh, thanks for the teachers in Kwangkai School, Dr. Bill, Jen, Dr. Marian, John, and other teachers. You helped me a lot and taught me a lot. I, I will never forget this help and in all my life. Thank you. Hello, I'm Pierre Dupineau from Haiti. The Hubert Onfoy Fellowship Program is one of the most empowering um, experiences that I have ever had in my life. Throughout the year, I have the privilege to get immersed in the U.S. culture and to discover what makes the U.S. that great. I have built strong relationships and professional networks that help me leverage my professional career to a higher level. Among my achievements, I I had the occasion to do um, a professional affiliation, a local professional affiliation with the Southwest Interdisciplinary Research Center of Arizona State University. And I am about to carry out um, a national, a virtual a national professional affiliation with the Pan American Health Organization. In addition, during the year, I have acquired very powerful leadership lessons. Two of the most important I will always have in mind is that as a leader, I have to be ready to experience discomfort and to seek opportunities in every crisis and problem um, I will face, whether in my personal or my professional life. Because at the end, every problem is a window of opportunity. Completing my own fray year, I want to thank my global friend, Dr. Amish Amid, and my mentors, Professor Darren Gilping and Professor um, Susan Luzovics, for all the lovely and kind support they provided to me throughout the year. Now, I am committed to harness and bring back home all the skin set, 
all the skill set I have acquired in leadership, communication management, crisis communication, and strategic communication in order to help young Haitian people to own their present and to build a better future by enhancing their problem solving and for thinking ability and as well their design thinking mindset. Thank you so much. The Hubert H. Humphrey Fellowship at ASU is a life-changing experience for me. It helped me grow both as a person and as a journalist. It also prepared me for my future roles in my industry and in my country. The year also opened me up to a whole new level of international reporting, a dream that I never thought I would be able to fulfill. So thanks to the Cronkite School for making it happen. Despite the abrupt end to our year, I am thankful that I was still able to maximize my fellowship. I took up data journalism and media entrepreneurship classes and had three professional affiliations, one through the Arizona Capital Times, one with the Honolulu Civil Beat in Hawaii, and currently with Axios. I also attended several journalism conferences that expanded my network. I also learned a lot about leadership and how to be a good leader. These are lessons that I will be carrying with me. But more than this, I am very thankful for the people I met here. The professors, my mentor, my classmates, the coordinators, and my friends. So thank you very much for all the help that you extended to me and to my co-fellows. And to my co-fellows, I know we went all through this together. I rest in the fact that we will all be bound by the shared experience years from now. So thank you and God bless everyone. Okay. So um, as Pierre had just said, the, the technology is um, uh, incredible and we re rise to um, some crisis communication and and we work things on the fly. So thank you, Chris and IT for handling the magic behind the screen. I have a couple uh, screens to show to thank some of our community partners. Just waiting for those to come up. Well, our community partners and the Cronkite staff, faculty, um, and of course, um, our global friends and our mentors, we could not do this without them. Um, there are literally hundreds of people that our fellows come in contact with throughout their um, concrete Humphrey year. And um, everybody that they meet when they first arrive here, their global friends, to the provost, um, on down to the frontline employees that work within the building to help them get registered for classes. Um, we thank you all, especially our global friends. Our global friends are an integral part of our program. We ask members of the community to come forth and volunteer their very precious time to be friends to our fellows once they arrive in Arizona. Sometimes um, these are individuals that are picking them up at the airport um, and they're the first people that they see once they arrive in very hot Arizona in Arizona or very hot Phoenix, Arizona in August. So we thank them and we thank them for um, their time and for staying uh, connected to the community and for introducing fellows to the Arizona community and culture. Additionally, we have Cronkite academic mentors and these individuals are true professionals um, that we have the privilege with to work alongside with every single day um, in, in the Cronkite building. And these are professionals that work with our fellows um, and help them explore professional opportunities as well as increase their circle of uh, professional contacts while they're here. And they just become very great 
um, leaders and just befriend our fellows and truly hold them up. And we so appreciate their support. They're the best. Um, so now we're going to show the second group of um, Humphrey Fellows making their statements. Should technology cooperate? Chris will show those second group of videos now. Hello from Havana, Cuba. Now that my Humphrey year is almost through and after we had uh, sadly social disruptive ending of the program, I have had some time to think and reflect about my main outcomes of that, uh, of the Humphrey year. And I think the main takeaway I had is the fact that leadership can be learned and that it's not only something you, um, that has to do with your personal features and characteristics, but also that you must work hard on that and that it has to do a lot with, with experience. Um, in general terms, I feel now as a more prepared uh, Per a professional and at a, that I am more aware of what I am ex expected to be in order to, to call myself a good communication professional and a good uh, team manage manager. Um, I would recall as my, one of my f uh, most, as one of my biggest uh, accomplishments, the fact that I got the opportunity of learning from leaders of the field, um, and had a closer look to American communication industry. And also from a, a journalistic point of view, the fact that I got to report both from Mexico and from the American border, taking into account I was studying in a journalism school in, a, in an American border state as Arizona is. Uh, so it was a very enriching experience for me. I would like to thank all the staff, uh, all the faculty members, all my fellows, all our global friends for having shared with me this uh, Humphrey year. And I wouldn't say goodbye to Cronkite School. Uh, I'd rather prefer a uh, see you later because I'm pretty confident that I will be able to continue um, to cultivate all the contacts and friends that uh, I've made along this year. Thank you. I am Deusi Rohangario from Uganda, and uh, when I started my fellowship journey, my aim was to build a website about Uganda's elections, complete with leaders' profiles, complete with parties' manifestos, and things that would help in educating and informing the public about the importance of their vote. As I am talking now, the website is up. It may delay a bit because of the problem that has been caused by the COVID-19, but I am sure that by the time I return to my country, the problem will have gone and the project will be on course. I would like to thank the leaders at IIE. I would like to thank the leaders at ASU. I would like to thank the staff at Cronkite, Dean Callahan and his staff, the, the coordinator of Humphrey Fellowship, the legendary Dr. Bill, the program manager and the, the support staff. I have benefited from an amazing fellowship and I want to say that I have never in my life experienced anything like this. Indeed, Humphrey Fellowship is a game changer. Thank you. I'm Ha, a fellow from Vietnam. I have an um, unforgettable feeling today to attend such as a special graduation ceremony never before in my life, remote celebrations. 
and COVID-19 has uh, turned everything upside down, but I can't defeat, uh, it can defeat this wonderful moment. Uh, it keeps up uh, the peace thanks to the excellent contribution from our Humphrey program managers and staffs. Uh, today, I am also very proud to be the 10th ASU Humphrey Fellowships program. I have learned a lot at Wonder Cronkite School, an excellent journalism and communication training school. And thank you so much for welcoming us here with respect and perfect care from the school and from IIE. Uh, today is also a special day when recording this video because it's the last day I stay in Phoenix, my second home for nine months. Uh, I got many new American and uh, Humphrey friends. Although we have different languages, cultures, we share a common interest in exploring America and our cross culture. It's create a, mu a mutual understanding. Uh, tomorrow, I will take a particular flight to return to my country and uh, carry with me the new ideas new leadership uh, spirit, mainly inspired by my professor, my mentors at ASU, fellows, students, global friends, and American cohorts. Uh, I believe I can make my dream come true like the way I create my way to Humphrey program. Thank you so much for everything that you are doing for me and other Humphrey fellows around the world. For me, my biggest accomplishment is that I would always be called a Fulbright Humphrey Fellow, which is the most competitive and prestigious fellowship around the world. This year, I did a lot of things. I did podcast for ASU campus radio called Blaze. I took amazing courses. I learned coding and journalism. I covered press conferences and release ahead of US election as a local reporter. And importantly, I got to see famous US cities through traveling. We spent the entire year discussing examples of the top decisions maker inside the nexus of global power and organizations. I have learned life changing thoughts and views about the nature of leadership and the qualities one should have to be a great leader. I'm taking back my leadership skill to listen more. I feel more confident on the face of adversaries like COVID-19. I think we believe in change and always wanted to have a positive attitude to no matter what. I will continue to be a storyteller, but with a proper platform to work focusedly on Pakistan, image building, freedom of expressions and women empowerment. I am so grateful to be a Humphrey Fellow at Cronkite School at this time, especially this time, because we could learn a lot about US election, pandemic, and all the other global crises. I'm sure this program helped me to be a better professional, better storyteller, and the network that I could establish here will really help me to be a better professional in my career. I will never forget about the experience that I got in Humphrey Seminars because we had small discussions in these seminars. These dis discussions were like mini newsrooms and these mini newsrooms really helped to keep our eyes on all the global events. This is the world full of opportunities. It has never been more connected and smaller and we have never faced such a challenge as we are facing it in this very moment. Time spent in Phoenix with my Humphrey year flew away in a glimpse of an eye. It is hard to imagine better preparation for being a good leader in these challenging times when the world is facing new normal. When I arrived in Arizona, my main goal was to bring to my news channel new digital strategy on how to produce and repackage news content from traditional broadcast formats to new formats adjusted for digital platforms, especially when it comes to breaking news. Now, breaking news are almost all news, and all day part is a prime time, and we are working like we never worked before. In order to survive, media has to attract new consumers, young audiences, but they won't come to us. We have to reach them. My last sentence in introductionary speech I gave in a Walter Cronkite school last August was, change is a new normal, but challenge is not in a change, it is in a motivation. 
if we only knew how big the change is going to be. Numbers are important. Making money from media is important. But the most important is that the current situation has redefined the way we work, creating the need for creative leaders to sharpen both emotional intelligence and operational skills to create nimble teams that can face all challenges. Moreover, what I have learned from this program and what I will never forget to apply while leading my team is to be active listener, working along with my team members for greater good. There is nothing more important than bringing joy and humanity in the newsroom we are working in now. Thank you, Nara, and thank all of the fellows for inspiring us with those great words. Um, you get an example just by listening to those 11 fellows and, and the, trying to put their whole Humphrey year into a very short amount of time. It's, a, it's an iceberg. It speaks volumes about what they've learned, what they do, and what they yet will do. We're delighted to welcome um, to our ceremony um, Lorita Campbell, who is a longtime friend of the Cronkite School and of the Humphrey Program. She's visited in our building many times, and we're delighted to have her share a few words on behalf of the U.S. Department of State and the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Lorita, I think we're ready to go to you. Thank you, Bill. I was only able to get my video to work for very brief moments about the 15 or 20 times I tried, but I think it's best if I just speak via audio, but I think you can tell still, it is such a pleasure for me to join you today. And it was wonderful to hear your personal remarks about your Humphrey year. On behalf of the U.S. Department of State, I want to congratulate you on completing your Humphrey Fellowship. And I, like Dr. Callahan and many others have said today, I wish we could be together in person to celebrate your accomplishments. I want to thank you for coming to the United States and engaging in the Humphrey Fellowship Program experience. As I heard in your videos, uh, you know, I was gonna say, I hope you are reflecting, but I know as I heard your videos that you are reflecting on your time in the United States and feeling a sense of accomplishment in your growth. And I hope you are also excited to share what you've learned and apply what you've learned upon return home. Hubert Humphrey once said, this then is the test we must set for ourselves, not to march alone, but to march in such a way that others wish to join us. I know that each of you have made an impact on your US communities and inspired others, whether it's through the projects that you took on during your professional affiliations or contributions that you made at workshops or seminars or roundtables at your campus or the personal connections that you've made with Americans and international citizens alike. The United States has benefited from your experience and your expertise. And we thank you for your contributions to our campus and our local communities. When you return home, you will be Humphrey Fellowship Program alumni. We hope you will keep in touch with us and keep us updated on your successes as you continue to work on behalf of the public good. We are very proud of our Humphrey alumni. We know that 61% of Humphrey alumni return home and work in the public sector in some capacity. We also know that 46% of alumni have helped develop national policies, created national programs, served as national trainers, and advised government officials on legislation in their own countries. Additionally, more than 80% of alumni have introduced new best practices and innovative management methods into their organizations back home. Humphrey alumni are marching in ways that others wish to join and Hubert Humphrey would be proud. We expect that all and much more of this from, from you. And we thank you uh, in advance for the vision and the innovation that you will bring to your communities your countries and our world. I hope you will join me as others have said in giving sincere thanks to Dr. Bill and Jan and of course, Dean Callahan and all of your colleagues at ASU who have worked tirelessly to create a campus environment 
and access to information and resources that would facilitate your individualized professional development and program success. So thank you, ASU. And thank you also to the II team. You, we know Peter and Amy and their colleagues have been excellent resources for all of you and for my team at ECA as well. And we deep, deeply value our partnership with ASU and IIE on this program. As Humphrey alumni, um, you will not need to walk alone uh, because you are part of a global network. Your network has expanded exponentially in the past year. And over the past 10 months, you have shared among your cohort what motivates you for your work and why it's important to you. And you have found future collaborators, or we hope you found future collaborators and professional contacts and lifelong friends uh, within your campus cohort. And we know that you will inspire others to join you along your way. I encourage you to continue to engage with your campus coordinators and with the IIE team and your US embassy uh, or consulates uh, to further grow your network through the International Exchange Alumni website and through local activities. We trust that through collaboration across the Humphrey and International Exchange Alumni Networks that you will develop solutions to shared challenges all for the greater good. So thank you and I send best wishes to you as you return home to contribute to our shared communities. Thank you everyone. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lorita, for those very kind words um, and very true words. We have an amazing network, an amazing support system um, at the Cronkite School, not only internally within our building, but externally with IIE and the Department of State and the fantastic staff um, that work within both of those um, organizations. We also have an incredible network of alumni from the Cronkite Humphrey School. Nine previous cohorts. As Dr. Bill mentioned, this current cohort brings us to 102 fellows from 58 countries. This year, since we were entering our 10th year, we decided that we were going to celebrate our previous nine cohorts and celebrate, of course, the 10th cohort that's currently here at Arizona State University. We ran a huge social media presence, got quotes and videos from previous Humphrey Fellows. And it is some of those alumni right now that would like to say a few words to this cohort. Hello in quarantine from Washington, DC. My name is Malik Siraj Akbar. I was a part of the first cohort of the Humphrey Fellows in 2010. Congratulations on the near completion of your fellowship program at ASU. I can't imagine how happy and proud you feel at the completion of the fellowship. But at the same time, you must be disheartened by the fact that you wouldn't be able to go out like the previous cohorts for your professional affiliation in different cities and states. But at the same time, look at the extraordinary opportunities these challenging times offer. Every blog post that you write, every article that you contribute to a local newspaper, every photo that you take, is eventually going to be a part of history. As you leave the Cronkite School, you would be a part of a global network of Humphrey Fellows and a part of the Fulbright family. So I wish you all the best with your future endeavors and congratulations again. Hello Humphreys 2020, you heroes of survival. Greetings from Zagreb, Croatia. I'm Daria of the Generation 1 at ASU, and here is a little something that I would like to share. Many times I've been a boss, and sometimes I managed to be a leader. And here's what I've learned. Every person on your team has something they're best at. Try to find the best in each person on your team and let that lead you through your vision and together you light up the world. Hello, 
my dear Humphrey Fellows, my name is Leila and uh, as an ex-Humphrey Fellow I'm extremely honored and super happy to be able to share and send this message to you. I'm sending you a lot of positive energy, a lot of good vibrations and a lot of patience which is very important in this very tough moment for you. Every leader knows that patience is directly connected with the purpose and sticking to it it is a way to more meaningful change. I'm wishing you a lot of readiness, a lot of focus, and for you to be able to understand what challenges are ahead of you once you get back to your homes. While this, enjoy one of the best years of your life. Uh, use it for your personal and professional growth, for getting amazing people and for creating amazing memories. Stay safe, stay well, and I'm sending you a lot of love and good energy. Ciao! And also, uh, there is some hope. Um, as far as I remember, you have a grace period on your visas, which means you can uh, stay a little beyond uh, your fellowship uh, in the country. Uh, so, um, still, there is a chance that lockdown will be lifted. And just keep enjoying staying for now. Um, because the Grand Canyon state really deserves it. Cheers! Hi everyone, my name is Lam Gizam. I am from the 2016 cohort. Um, I just wanted to send you positivity all the way from this tiny Himalayan kingdom called Bhutan. I know that this must be extremely challenging for you guys. It was such a challenging period for me even without a pandemic. So I can empathize with what you must be enduring at this point. I just want to remind you to be kind to yourself. Um, don't think about being successful in terms of how much you accomplish at this point. I think just surviving the pandemic as a sane person, intact, um, and being kind to yourself is good enough at this point. Um, I know what the situation is like in the US and my heart goes out to all of you in these really uncertain times, but I do want to let you know that all of these things end. Um, all bad times do end. I went through a personal experience myself right after my Humphrey Fellowship and I thought it would never end, but it did end. Um, so there is a light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how far it looks to you at this point. Just keep going. Just be kind to yourself. Um, take care of your mind um, as much as you want to take care of your professional affiliation and your work. Um, just just um, be really kind to yourself at this point. Don't push yourself too hard. Uh, listen to a lot of music. That's what I do when I'm incredibly stressed. Um, and reach out to good friends, reach out to family, people who care about you to talk to them. Um, I'm sure many of you have good support systems and even if you don't, there are Humphrey Fellows like me who are happy to talk to you at this point um, to um, exchange notes on how difficult the fellowship is at this stage. Um, just stay positive, I'm sending you lots of love um, and strength all the way from Bhutan. Hi guys, this is Marina from Bosnia and Herzegovina and I was waiting for a Saturday afternoon to uh, take some fresh air, feel sun on my face and uh, hopefully uh, share with you some interesting stuff. Uh, yes, during Saturday and Thursday we can go out, so it's a really positive change in my life, especially after uh, being locked down for almost two months with my growing belly, yes I'm pregnant, and with my six-year-old kid. And um, I would like to have summer without COVID-19 and of course uh, meet all of you. Stay positive. Bye. Hey guys, best wishes from Uruguay. I've heard that you're going through a difficult time there and missing your PAs and probably not knowing exactly how you're gonna finish your experience in Phoenix and and your fellowship so I just want to send you a big hug from here from Uruguay we are all dealing with some crazy things right now in this pandemic hopefully everything will settle down soon but all I can do is like tell you to enjoy your last time there your last 
days. It's an experience that you're gonna remember for your life. Try to make as many contacts as you can and enjoy your time together, which is one of the best things you can do. And hopefully when dust is settled, uh, you're gonna be able to appreciate the good things that you're gonna, you will get there from Dr. Bill, Jan and everybody. So best wishes to, for all and see you soon somewhere. Dear Humphrey friends, Nepal is in the state of virtual lockdown for the last four weeks and I have been working from home. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted our lives all around the world. I have been closely following your blog posts and challenges that you faced towards the end of your Humphrey year. This pandemic has disrupted our professional lives, personal lives, and also made us aware of the challenges that we collectively are facing as mankind. I'm sure this experience will make us more resilient and also make us better prepared to work collectively in our endeavors for the benefit of mankind through our personal and professional works. My best wishes as you are all set to meet your Humphrey year. Thank you. Hello everyone, dear Humphrey Fellows. My name is Alex Gorbachev and I was a Humphrey Fellow in 2018-2019. I met some of you during Global Leadership Forum here in Washington DC where I'm based now. And I was thrilled because every single person I met had an outstanding personality. You're great people and I believe that experience you got, you got at SU, all the people you met, all knowledge you got will help you in your future career in life as it uh, fully changed my life and my career. America is very special country uh, to be and I'm sure that all experience you got here will help you to achieve the goal uh, which you want to achieve, especially uh, in regarding to press of freedom and uh, human rights development all over the globe. I wish you all the best, stay well, good luck and I hope that we will stay in touch. Thank you Alex and thank everyone for making that possible to see the, the great memories of great fellows, just a snapshot of some of those who have come before. We're almost at the end of our program, we're grateful those of you who have stayed with us this long, it's kind of hard to do that in a Zoom environment, but we appreciate so much the various messages and themes that we've heard, the idea of walking of leadership that Peter talked about and Loretta saying that, you know, we're marching on when indeed we are, Hubert Humphrey would be proud of that march that continues. And you saw examples of that just in the fellows that we just heard from. I think the old song from Rogers and Hammerstein, you'll never walk alone is particularly important right now because you are not alone. And indeed you have not been alone during this year. In fact, you have, among the 11 of you really coalesced around this wonderful sense of, of family togetherness, connectedness. And we'd like to play a video that will illustrate that, that we had nothing to do with, that was totally spontaneously put together by the fellows to capture the beauty of this Humphrey year, especially those who worked on it was Han, Irene, Chantau, and Ong. Let's watch the video highlights of the year. Humphrey Fellows come to the state. We don't have our families here, and sometimes we are, are feeling so bad, or uh, maybe only. Uh, however, uh, I think with the Humphrey Fellows, um, they uh, became our family member uh, at the state, at the Phoenix. All in all, I think there are a lot of really, really memorable moments for the past year. It's really hard to choose just one. 
thinking about my Humphrey year, I can assure that as much as I learn from all the professional activities, I also learn from the fact of uh, having spent so much time with people coming from so many different places, speaking different language, coming from different professional backgrounds and culture. The Global Leadership Forum was a very special and enriching experience for me. And I can say also for all the Humphrey Fellows, we got to meet and collaborate with other fellows from the different universities across the U.S. And at the same time, we also attended different seminars on leadership. Global Leadership Forum was the important aspect of this whole year as a Humphrey Fellow. And for me, it was more important because I participated in the poster fair competition where we were able to tell other fellows and from other universities and also we share data with the officials of State Department where we were telling about how in journalism in our field feeder what is the state of freedom of expression in our countries. Uh, when I stand on the First Amendment from in Crown Head Building and I just feel so nervous about that even it's just a two minute speech but uh, I feel so nervous about it because that is the first time I speak in English and <laughs> I just want to express my uh, excitement. During the welcome reception carried out in September 2019, I had the occasion to meet for the first time my global friend, Dr. Amish Amid, and my mentor, Professor Dawn Gilping, and from then on, we built a very strong and powerful relationship that helped me later on to discover Arizona and downtown Phoenix and to immerse in the U.S. culture. And I'm really thankful for being part of the Uber Humphrey Fellowship Program and to be a Humphrey Fellow from the 10th cohort of the program. I would like to talk about particularly about my Google friend and the relationship that we built here. Uh, she just became my mom. Anytime she used to see me, she knows that what I feel right now. If I'm sad, if I'm happy. So that's how she gets me. I couldn't think about my Humphrey year without remembering our global friends, not only my own global friend, Ileana from Romania, uh, who has been amazing even now in the distance, uh, but also some of my fellow um, global friends who have uh, devoted us with so much support. They have, they have also opened their houses to us. So besides uh, some of the activities in the class, we got also many funny activities like uh, city hunt. You know, I really love this city hunts because we can uh, discover the Phoenix city and also we can learn more about the teamwork. It's a great uh, opportunity. It was very um, challenging to say the least and it was funny because we had to approach strangers. We also had to do some silly acts just to get points. But it was one of the fun moments of the fellowship. So, <laughs> <laughs> we want you to say Happy New Year in your language. And if there's some... I remember going to Dr. Bill's house um, with the whole cohort around Christmas time and it was pretty interesting. We played this game, White Elephant, and uh, I've never played it before, but it was very interesting to see everybody like fighting over the same gift and, and everybody trying to avoid this other gift. Um, it was a nice time. Um, and of course, uh, all of us birthday, the, the ones that we got to have there, um, trying Burmese food with on, on Auntie Gigo's hamburgers by the pool. Uh, so many nice moments I couldn't recall right now to this video, but that I can assure I will have with me wherever I go. I am forever indebted to what I have achieved in this wonderful country. I thank the mentors and our group of friends. I have never experienced a, a, a huge opportunity of learning like this one I have achieved during this Humphrey year. Thank you very much. I think 
that the Arizona State University, especially with the director, uh, Mr. Craw, uh, did a great job with the communication. ASU started to prepare everything for online courses. They pulled out the special website for coronavirus updates. Uh, there is a 24-7 healthcare service where you can call and report the fact that you are having symptoms or some psychological troubles because of uh, self-isolation, which I really think is super important. So far, I feel safer here than in my country, the Philippines, because at this point, it's kind of um, filled with confusion, uncertainty back home, so I'd rather stay here first. It is difficult. I'm feeling uh, very much concerned about being alone here, not yeah, meeting anybody, uh, not sharing and renting out your feelings because this is also like a paranoia. Studying abroad is not easy as I thought, but this cohort and everyone in Cronkite School help me in best ways as if they are my own family. Uh, in this cohort, we argued a lot, but we still love each other and we solve many problems collectively, like choosing apartments, looking for professional affiliations, or organizing trips. So, this program gives me not only knowledge for my profession, but also it gives me a new family that I will never be able to forget. My cohort, if you were afraid, they will not, you will not go down in history as a 40th Humphrey cohort or 10th cohort of the ASU. We will sure go down in history as the coronavirus cohort. And yeah, I'm kidding, like we, we were the greatest anyway. A lot of great memories there in that video, and we appreciate uh, the team that worked so hard, especially on to pull it together. There's lots of people that the Humphrey Fellows have influenced, including lots of students. They were in numerous classes with them, and in the Humphrey Seminar, there are attaches, which are students who get selected to participate with Professor Meisner and uh, Dr. Barrett. So we appreciate the relationships that happened as well. Um, as we finish up here. I just have two or three more slides, but one of the most important things is to say your work is not yet done. Lest you think after today you go out and celebrate and eat virtual cake, whatever that tastes like, um, the work is still to come. And although the Humphrey Fellows may not travel to New York, Washington, or San Francisco, organizations, government, private industry, entrepreneurial companies have opened up their doors so that a Humphrey Fellow can continue what we believe is the crown jewel of the Humphrey program, and that's a professional affiliation. Many of them have already begun, and they'll continue to the uh, about the seventh day of June. So that's a wonderful opportunity, and these are the local and national and international organizations that have opened up the doors for the fellows to participate in the what we call the PA, the professional affiliation. A couple of final quotes from our namesake. Life's unfairness is not irrevocable, said Hubert Humphrey. We can help balance the scales for our others, if not ourselves. And indeed, it might seem in the world of COVID-19, life has been a little unfair. But I think one of the lessons among the many that we've learned this year is perseverance and resilience and how to go forward. And we do that in the last slide you'll see through the great gift of friendship. That's been wonderfully displayed as we've celebrated together for this past hour, the graduation of the cohort of Humphrey Fellows from the Cronkite School, and know that their work is not yet done, that it's still going to continue um, as we continue to learn the walk of leadership. I chose as the background slide for Zoom, the First Amendment. And that's something that the fellows have seen every day as they have walked into the Cronkite School. So from all of those different nations that you just saw there on the screen, they all have embedded in them, not our version of the First Amendment, but your own country's version of the power of freedom of the press. 
We know you will tell that story to the world and we're grateful for what you've shared with us so far. So as we close, we invited the fellows, all and Chris Campbell, who's done miracles behind the scenes, far better than the Wizard of Oz, uh, to allow us to just give a wave and say thank you and congratulations to all of our 11 Humphrey Fellows and to all of the wonderful people who've been part of that process, from Amy to Dean Callahan, to Peter, to Larita, to everybody who's part of that team. Thank you for staying with us for so long. I wish we were eating cake. Go have some enjoyment and know how grateful we are, but your work is not yet done.